Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now today I'm excited because I'm going to be installing my mini um, Starlink satellite dish to the roof of my Mercedes Vario camper van. Are they dishes anymore? After all, this is flat and square. It's more like a chopping board. <laughs> anyway, so before I fit my Starlink chopping board to the roof of my van, I have actually got some accessories I need to try out. And most importantly, will they actually work? So let's get those accessories out of the van, lay them on the table, plug everything on, make sure it fits, and make sure it actually works. Accessories. This is my mini Starlink or mini Starlink chopping board. You can see I have actually used this. I used it when we was up in the um, Highlands. And I've got to say, it worked perfectly fine, except this. All these cables, plus this, stored in a drawer. You'd be surprised how much room this actually takes up. And that's why I want to try and have a go at fitting this up on the roof. After all, it's waterproof, so there's no reason why that can't stay up on the roof permanently. Well, I don't want to fit it permanently, permanently, if you know what I mean. That's why I got this magnet mount. And I want to say thank you to my friends David and Diana for recommending one of these to me. So this is a magnetic mount. The, the Starlink dish or chopping board <laughs> should go in this. And then it's a magnetised to the roof. So if ever I want to take this Starlink dish and take it with my sprinter, say, I can simply take it off the roof of this van and put it onto another van. The wiring's going to have to stay where it is. Let's see how strong this is. Yeah. That's strong enough. That'll do. Does it fit though? This is the second one of these I've brought. The first one I brought was really cheap and the chopping board wouldn't actually fit inside it. So the first thing I'm going to do before I do anything else is actually make sure that it fits. It looks like it's going to be really simple to do. I'll come to the little box in a minute. This is the bit I'm kind of worried about. <laughs> Right, I imagine that's no instructions as per usual, but that's all right. Just like that. Right, yeah, okay, so it's got a little lip there. It's pretty self explanatory, and that's why there's no instructions. All oh, these need doing up, they're a bit loose. Worry about that in a minute. I'm going to put it up on its end. Yes, like that. So that just simply clips over by the looks of it. That's a nice tight fit. Much better than the last one I brought. So this was a little bit dearer than the first one, but cheaper than the one that David and Diana have got. Sorry guys. <laughs> it's, a, it's a middle of the road one, shall we say. Right, got it. It's just a matter of a bit of finesse. There we go, so that fits. Yeah, that's pretty solid in there. That's not gonna come out. Let's just do these magnets up. They need to screw up a bit tighter, I think. Let's try it again, make sure it's, I mean, oh yeah. <laughs> Don't think that's gonna fall off the roof. <coughs> that passes. Right, so that's the mount done. Now, this we need 240 volts for, to make this power brick work and they're quite power hungry so what I'm going to do is upgrade it to this little device here this is a simple transformer so this is going to take 12 volts and turn it into 30 volts to power our Starlink mini dish hopefully yes so I need to connect oh that's what they are so it comes with these little connector blocks. These are like these little things here. But to be honest, I really don't like these, so I'm not going to use them. I'm going to use me, me old fashioned connectors. Right, so I found some connectors, good old fashioned connector blocks. So I'm going to use these connector blocks just like my granddad did during the war. They're a bit old fashioned, but they work. I won't make you watch me do this. I've cut all this out of the video. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've wired this up. Really simple to do. Honestly, guys, you've got 12 volts going in one end and 30 volts coming out the other. If I turn it around, you can see a really simple wiring diagram on the back. So if you're thinking about doing this, 
then uh, yeah, no problem at all. But the one thing that really interests me or fascinates me is how more efficient this is compared to the original. After all, people with camper vans have 12 volt leisure batteries. So using this, you're taking those 12 volts, just boosting it up to 30 volts, and that's the end of it. Plug it into your mini dish and away you go. Whereas using the original plug, you need to take those 12 volts, put it through an inverter, boost it up to 240 volts, and then you plug this in and bring it all the way back down to 30 volts so you can use it in your Starlink mini dish. And because power in our camper vans is so precious, I really am interested to see the difference in the power draw using these different systems. Is our modified system more efficient than the original? I think the best way to find this out is to actually plug these into a power bank. It just so happens I've got the perfect power bank for this task. Okay, so to conduct our little experiment, I'm going to be using the Jackery Explorer 500 too. It's their latest design. I do like this new handle, and it has a 500 watt pure sine wave inverter, so this should work. After all, this is quite sensitive equipment. Um, and it's also got a 12 volt 10 amp outlet. This is where I'm a little bit worried because I'm not sure how much power this is actually going to draw. If this draws more than 10 amps, this whole experiment is going to be a waste of time because it simply won't work. I do believe um, the 10 amps means it's 120 watts. So I'm really not sure how much this is going to draw. So we're going to try this first. Otherwise, there's no point in carrying on <laughs> with this experiment. I'm kind of hoping it works. Otherwise, I'm going to have egg on my face. Right, let's plug this in. If I can, if I get it through into the hole. There we go, that's in. Oh, I like the way how neat that is. That is really neat. Okay, let's stand this up like that so you can actually see the screen. Hopefully you can see the screen on this. Right, we'll plug this in. Switcher on. Right, switch that on. Okay, so this has got a 500 watt hour battery built into it or 20 and power battery, so I should have plenty of power for this if the 12 volt socket can take it. At the moment, it's only 12, 13 watts. That's surprisingly low. Let's see how it goes. How's it gonna go? Just make sure none of these wires come undone. 13 watts. 14. Obviously, this has got an MPPT charge controller built into it as well. So if this works, theoretically, right, bear with, just indulge me for a minute. If this actually works, you could take the Jackery Explorer 500 V2 right into the middle of the desert, like the Australian Outback, for instance, with your little Starlink mini dish and stay connected. I mean, technology nowadays, it's just mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. Right, we're at 27 watts, 26. Okay, so it's bouncing between 26 and 27 watts. That's pretty good. Oh, that's not a lot at all. I'm really, I'm quite happy with that. That's nothing. This could run the whole thing. Mind you, it is idle. It's not doing anything. It's just sitting idle. It's just switched on. I guess once you start drawing power and using the internet, the consumption of power will probably go up. But it doesn't matter if it's sitting idle, it's only using 27 watts, I'll take that. The important thing is now to plug this in and see how much power this uses whilst it's sitting idle. Right, let's turn it off. Sit, unplug it. Right, that's on. So that's plugged in. Let's see what difference this makes. Is it gonna make a difference? Right, the DC's turned off. Switch the AC on. Wow, well, there you go. It's only using 34 watts. I'm really surprised. I was expecting it to use at least double what our modified um, transformer was going to use. Absolutely amazing. Or maybe that's just testimony to the efficiency of the inverters built into the Jackery Explorer 500. Me too. I don't know. Either way, it does still use more power using the standard one than the 12 volt adapter. But I'm still at a bit of a quandary now. Have I just wasted 30 quid on this? Should I just stuck to the original and then put the little jackery in the cupboard somewhere and just use the jackery and my Starlink as a separate standalone system in the van? But just goes to show, really interesting. Uh, if you're thinking about modifying your Starlink using one of these adapters, just bear this in mind. 
doesn't really make that much difference. There you go. All right, let's switch all this off and then think about how we can actually fit this and wire it up to the van. Okay, so here we are. I didn't film this part because it was just no room. <laughs> so here's the transformer here. I put it directly below my main fuse board so that this cable didn't have to be too long. But as it turned out, it was a little bit too short. So I had to add a little bit of extra wire. And to do that, I simply added a TX60 quick connect on the other side that this goes to my main fuse board. And this gives me the bonus. If, there, if, if anything does go wrong with the transformer, I can quickly disconnect it. Although saying that, we have got a 10 amp fuse as well, just in case. And the cables coming from the transformer go up, they join my main wiring loom and go up to my main switchboard. And here it is, here's my main switchboard. Now all these switches on here do my lights, all but one. This one does my water pump, but this one, more importantly, was actually free. This was dead, it didn't do anything. So now the power from my transformer, which is just down here, comes up to this switch and then up to the roof of my van. So when I'm not using the Starlink, I can simply flick this switch up and that's gonna save me loads of power. Right, let's get up on the roof, connect it all up. Fingers crossed, it actually works. Right, one chopping board. <laughs> yes, um, I want it that way round, I think, because my logic is the wind won't drive underneath it or the rain, if I'm going in that direction, then we want the connector to be at the back. So we'll put that right there on that nice flat piece of the roof. Crikey. <laughs> yeah, that's not going anywhere. This cable underneath there, that. And then here's our cable coming up from the switchboard. So all I need to do now is solder these together. I'm not going to use any fancy connector blocks. I'm actually going to hard solder these um, just because I can, really. And to do that, we need some power. There we go. Now, ordinarily, I would use a uh, extension lead, but my extension lead just isn't quite long enough. So we've got this rather handy we go it's going to come in use yes there we go it is on right give that a couple of minutes and to warm up and then we'll solder these wires together well this is definitely one of those situations where you need two pairs of hands because i need to hold these wires and solder them at the same time so i've got my side cutters i'm simply going to rest those there like that hopefully that stays there and that'd be good enough for me to solder them. Well, I need now some actual solder. Right, okay, first we need to prep our wires. So to do that, we simply strip them back. Like this, with a little wire stripper. Same with these. I've cut these um, because I want to do it fresh. Nice fresh solder on them, like that because this is, after all, quite a high-tech piece of equipment. We want a good connection on these. So we're just gonna twiddle these wires up. These wires are surprisingly thin, really thin wires. We'll twiddle these as well. So what we do to get a good solder, we find our solder, where did I put it? Oh, there it is, under my nose. So we get our solder, make a little pull on the soldering iron. Get just a little blob, a little bubble, and get our cable that we want to solder, hold it against it. When it gets to temperature, it will seem to almost disappear. You can see the solder just runs between all the strands of wire. Stroke it on like that, nice. So we hold these two wires together like that, side by side, with a little blob of solder on our soldering iron. We simply, he says, with a steady hand. Oh, get on there. Aha. There we have it. Yes. There we go. So now we've got this rather 
nice join there that's not going to come undone it's not going to fail put them side by side oh look at that one straight away got it there you are that's better isn't it <laughs> yeah that's a perfect join it's not pretty but it's okay it works now we get a heat shrink heat shrink that over there like that heat shrink that on there like that there you go perfect join again use our solder solder line shake the excess solder off and just using the end of a solder line we shrink the heat shrink onto the cable there you go nice semi-professional join there we go absolutely perfect there we have it a nice really good join better than using any crimpers it's soldered we're going to get nice uninterrupted power going to our mini dish there you go not the prettiest but it'll work well done jackery save me running an extension lead up here okay let's clear all this away and then we'll go back in the van switch it on see if it works right so here we are back inside the van now theoretically if i flick this switch we should have starlink satellite connection we should become connected to the wide world web let's open up the app at the moment it says i'm offline let's flick the switch nothing's gone bang <laughs> that's good that's a good sign we're still not connected though we're looking for oh yeah i've put the fuse in oh, oh here we go it's done I was getting worried then, I thought it wasn't going to work. There we are, we are connected, we are online. Bloody brilliant. But, have I just wasted my time? Could I have just used the little Jackery Explorer 500 and saved myself all this trouble? Potentially, yes. But I guess the good thing is, now that I've got it all installed, it's permanently fixed to my van, semi-permanently, because it's on magnets, if I do want to use my Starlink dish in any other of my other camper vans, as you know, we've got a few, <laughs> well, two others, I can simply unplug the Starlink, take it off the roof of this van, grab me little Jackery 500 Explorer, and go off exploring and still make videos and upload them for your viewing pleasure. Talking about the Jackery, it's still at 93%, so we've only used seven percent of the power throughout this entire experiment i'm really pleased with that so if you want to get yourself one of these little jackery explorer 500s i will leave a link in the description of this video purely for your convenience well i do hope you found this video mildly entertaining slightly informative if you did then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and i'll see you very soon thanks for watching ta-da for now